Hi, everyone, and welcome to this lightning talk about Merge. Um, we have just 10 minutes, but I really want to show you how powerful Merge is. And it's really straightforward once you understand all the, the fundamentals. So let's get started. OK, um, so what is Merge? A uh, quick recap. So Merge really ensures that a pattern exists in the graph by creating it if it does not exist already. Um, one of the key factors for merge is that it doesn't use any partial patterns. So it's an all or none kind of thing. And this is something that I want to go through in our session today. Um, and the other part of merge, which is kind of interesting, is it allows you to define what should happen based on whether data was created or, or matched. So this is the on create on update clause. Um, on match clause, um, we're going to skip over this today because it's it's really really straightforward and um, there are there are no hidden tricks there. I promise. So let's start with the match or the create. So what merge does essentially is it first tries to match your pattern in the graph, and if it finds it, that's it. We're done. If you don't find if it doesn't find the pattern, then it's it's going to try and um, create the pattern, and it's going to try and create the entire pattern. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of very basic examples before we get into the into the tricky ones. So on an so let's imagine that you have an empty empty graph, right? There are no nodes, nothing in it, and you run this merge statement where we're merging a person with name P1. Uh, what happens in this case is first Cipher is going to try and match this pattern, so it's going to look for a node with a label of person. Um, and this node needs to have a property called name. And the value of that property needs to be P1. Um, but of course, because this is an empty graph, uh, it cannot match this pattern. And so what happens is it's created. So you, you see the result of this statement is a single node with a label um, person and a name property called P1. Now, you can repeat this over and over again. And this is really the beauty of Merge when, when you don't want extra or duplicate nodes to be created. Um, you use Merge. So Merge, uh, you can run it over and over. It's an item potent function. And no matter how many times you run this particular statement, you will have only one person uh, in the graph with name P1. Now, this is, of course, different from create, which will create a node as many times as you run um, the create statement. OK, so, so nodes is pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about relationships. So we have two people in the graph, and we want to ensure that um, if they're friends, they're only friends once. So we just want one friend relation between uh, these two people. So no matter how many times um, P1 or P2 declare that they're friends, it doesn't matter. We just want one friend relation. So in this case, uh, what we do is we look up um, the nodes on on either end of this relation. So we're going to match uh, the we're going to match person one. We're going to match person two, and then we're going to merge the relationship in. So the very same concept applies as with nodes. Uh, Cipher is first going to try and match the pattern. So it's, it it already has P one. It has P two. It's going to try and look for an outgoing friend relationship from P one to P two. And it doesn't find it, so it will create it. Now, you can run this merge statement as many times as you like. And you will still have exactly this picture. You're going to have two nodes with a friend relationship between them. Uh, let me just get my slide to advance. Yep, there we go. OK, now the problem with the previous slide is if you so so many times you are ingesting data from third party systems or you are streaming updates to the graph um, and you're not really sure how much of this data really exists in your graph so it's quite possible that um, one of these persons isn't really in your graph in which case this query is going to do nothing um, because it's not even going to, going to get to the merge it's going to fail at the match it cannot find a person and that's it um, the query stops executing right it could not match them so a safer way to go about this is to really merge in everything. So you merge the person P1 in, you merge P2 in, 
Uh, so this ensures that if either of P1 or P2 don't exist in the graph, they are going to be created. And then you merge the friend relationship in. And this is a very, very safe merge and, of course, um, the recommended way to merge. So merge in your nodes and then your relationships. Um, quick detour into directions of relationships. Um, so, so we said that we want only one friend relationship to exist between P1 or P2, right? So, so let's say we have this in the graph already, uh, P1 with an outgoing uh, relationship to P2. And um, you try to run the merge at the bottom here, where if you, if you look closely enough, the direction of the friend relationship is reversed. So we are trying to merge in now P2 being um, a friend of P1. We don't want... We don't want the graph to change. We expect that they're already friends, they stay friends, and that's about it. But what happens when you really run this merge statement is you get this. You get a, a, a reverse friend relationship created between P1 and P2. And if you, th if you think about it, is, it is really quite logical because um, remember that Cypher tries to match first. So when it gets to the merge P1 friend P2, it's going to be looking for an incoming friend relationship from P2 to P1, and, and that doesn't exist. We have an outgoing from P1 to P2. Um, and so it's going to say, OK, doesn't exist. I'm going to create it. And that's when you land up uh, with this situation. So, so the safest thing to do when you want uh, to ignore the direction uh, is simply leave it off. So in this particular merge statement here, you see we merge P1 friend of P2. And now it doesn't matter which direction this relationship is in, you will have one and only one friend relation between them. And again, because when, when Cypher tries to match it, all it looks for is a friend relation in either direction uh, between P1 and P2, and then it finds it, so it doesn't try to merge in another one. OK, so uh, let's get to bound elements, which I would say are really um, the most important. So, so bound elements is really the key to understanding what part of this pattern is created if it's not matched. And, and this trips up a lot of people. So what is a bound element, first of all? So if you have an identifier in your pattern, which was used in an earlier clause of your Cypher statement, then that is bound. It's bound to a node or a relationship. And, um, and then what merge does is it basically hangs on to these bound elements and only creates parts of the pattern uh, that are unbound. Uh, of course, one thing to re uh, remember with merge is that it does not partially match patterns. This is really, really important. It's either the entire pattern or none. Slightly different with bound elements. So let's have a look at some examples. So we are looking at an empty graph over here, and we are directly going to merge in this entire pattern. So we're going to merge in a supplier who supplies chocolate, and um, the beans originate from Ecuador. So on an empty graph, um, it's going to try to match. It finds absolutely nothing. Probably stops at the supplier, to be honest, because it finds nothing. And then it says, OK, good, I'm going to create it. And it creates the entire pattern, so um, all three nodes and both relationships. So this is cool. Um, yeah, there's a bit of delay with my slides. There we go. Um, so on top, you see the, the three nodes and the two relations that were just merged. Now look at the query below it. And you would imagine that you know the supply is the same, the country is the same, um, but we want the supplier to supply a new chocolate. Um, the code is C200, right? It doesn't exist. So you would hope that you run the statement and you're just gonna get a new chocolate neatly connected up to the supplier and the country. But in fact, that is not what you get. What you actually get is the entire pattern replicated again, uh, but now with a different chocolate. And again, if you really if you really think about it, uh, always think match first, right? So um, Cypher looks at the supplier, it finds it. Um, it looks at the supplier's relation to a chocolate with code C200, and it doesn't find it. That's it. It just stops. It says, OK, I can't match the pattern. So I'm going to create it, and I'm going to create the whole pattern. So this is almost never what you want. So let's look at what we could have done better. So here's where the bound elements come in. Um, we match the supplier and we match the country. And now these two identifiers, supplier and country, are bound. They are um, your sort of your query is already anchored on these nodes. 
And now when we get to the merge pattern, which kind of uh, ref um, refers to only the identifiers, you're looking at a pattern which is, is bound on supplier and country. And then the only part missing is the chocolate. And so what it does is it creates the missing relations from the supplier uh, to the chocolate node, which it also creates, and then the origin back to the country. Okay, so this is, this is what happens when you have bound um, identifiers. Um, of course, this is with a match. So this assumes that your supplier and country do exist in the graph. Um, may not always be the case. Uh, so the safest thing to do, if you want these nodes to be created, of course, is to merge them all in independently. So you merge in your supplier, merge in your country, merge in your chocolate, and then merge in your pattern. And you can't go wrong. You absolutely cannot go wrong with this. There is no guesswork as to what part of the pattern will be merged, what part of it will be duplicated. Are you going to get the whole pattern replicated again? Um, so merge in the nodes first, and this ensures that they are now bound. And then your pattern is very, 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 very straightforward. Okay, so, so here you see that we've merged in um, another chocolate and another country, but the supplier hasn't been duplicated, the old chocolate hasn't been duplicated, it's exactly as we expect. So this is one of the best practices for merge, nodes first, then relationships. Okay, so constraints. So another best practice for merge is um, because you really want only one of those things to exist in the graph, uh, the node especially, it's always recommended that you create a unique constraint on them. And this serves a couple of purposes. One is um, other queries writing to the graph, make sure that they don't kind of, they don't violate this constraint because it's gonna fail. Uh, the second, I would say, I can't say it's an advantage or a disadvantage, but it is, let's say, kind of a side effect. If you have a strange pattern or a complicated pattern and you're not sure whether it's gonna be merged in all at once or not, um, you have the backing of the constraints. So if you merge in like one of the patterns that I showed you early on, um, it would fail because the constraint would be validated. So it's kind of like a fallback mechanism, though I don't, I don't recommend it that um, it's used as a fallback mechanism. And finally, the last real advantage of the constraint is if you are writing multi-threaded to your graph, um, there are some cases where because it's a match and create, uh, there might be a race condition and you attempt to write two nodes with exactly the same value to the graph. And here again, the constraint will catch this. So always define constraints on the property of the node that you're merging into your graph, and it will, it will not hurt you. So this is what happens, uh, for example, this is the very first merge statement that we ran, um, where we, we didn't really want it to create this entire pattern and we were saved with the uh, constraint failure. So because the constraint was violated, um, the you know, we, we, didn't kind, we didn't get the extra supplier and the country created in the graph. So constraints are a very good thing. Okay, and on to the last part, merging nodes and properties. So in the first example, we are merging in a chocolate with code C400. So you can run this as many times as you like, and you will have one and only one chocolate node with C400 as a code. Now, um, so let's say you're, you're getting updates from, from other systems, right? And in another system, maybe they've upgraded themselves and now they start tracking um, the year of harvest. Um, so they send it along to your uh, to Neo4j and your merge statement you know, tries to write in this extra property. What is gonna happen here is also unexpected for a lot of people starting off with merge. Um, you're not gonna have harvest appended onto your chocolate node. You're gonna have a brand new chocolate node uh, with code C400 and the harvest. And again, if you really think about it, it is very logical because it tries to match first, right? So it's gonna look for a, a node with a label chocolate, which it finds. Uh, a code C400, which it also finds, and a property called harvest, and it doesn't find this, so it stops and says, okay, I can't match it. I am gonna create it all over again. Now, again, if you have had a unique constraint, it would not happen, um, but if you didn't, then this is what is going to happen just when you merge in simple nodes and properties. So in this case, the best practice is really always just merge on your primary key. Every other property can wait. Um, you set it after you've merged, and this makes sure that um, it always finds the node by primary key. And of course, you should have a constraint um, on that primary key. Okay, so to summarize, um, 
be safe with bound elements, right? Um, there is absolutely nothing you gain by writing uh, very long, complicated patterns, trying to merge them in. Um, I know it's boring, but merge the nodes first in and then the relationships, and um, you will be really, really happy with that. Merge always on the primary key. So any other properties can be set after that. And of course, create a unique constraint on the primary key. And um, you really cannot go wrong with merge if you understand this. Thank you.